golfers! Well, welcome to Golf in the Cosmos, episode 24. I'm Kevin Robowski, and here we talk all things McElgrady and Morad. So we're still here, part two of the infamous hotel video. Created a lot of interest and a lot of support, a lot of viewers. So great to see that. Um, of course, I warned everybody it's a little odd, but the information is fantastic. And today's segment will cover part two of this video. And again, Mac and Steve Erickson are going over some of the nuances of the swing and competition, some nice anecdotes, really good information. Mac talks about changing your waggle system if you have uh, periodic yips or yipping conditions um, and also uh, the address position why it's so important to sort of nuzzle the club face as close to the ball as possible and again i found this very beneficial in my own game and this is again a period where mac is really advocating a narrow stance uh, for all clubs and in this particular um, time frame this is helping Mac alleviate some of the back pressure as well so narrow stance eliminate sliding right just creates more of a pivot action over one stationary axis and Mac is saying it alleviated a lot of pressure off his back so these are some of the reasons why you might experiment with a narrow stance. Um, also, there is um, good information on the importance of more of a shut face, closed face um, approach to swinging, some of the benefits. And so Matt goes into some nice detail about that as well. Again, this is part two, it's a little bit shorter and Again, enjoy. I hope that this information provides you not only some entertainment, but perhaps with an open mind, you can explore and experiment some, with some ideas and some swing keys that you had maybe uh, not thought about before. And I think that's one of the real purposes of this program and these videos. So, if you like, please press like, please subscribe, pop me a comment or an email, and we'll see you next week. Happy holidays. What's the rule? If you touch the ball, it doesn't move, so if you touch like that, it doesn't move, you're okay, right? Just so it goes back to the original place. And it almost, almost does, it almost does. Oh, yeah, it never, it never moves that. Yeah. That's part of the discipline of your nerves, too. Yeah. But is the blade just sitting square like that, then? Yeah, yeah it's square, but it's, but it's very, it's held on the ground like this. Put your hand out like this. It's flat. It's held out on the ground like this. What do you mean? Well, here I can just let the whole weight fall. Uh -huh. The okay. club is always is barely touching the ground. Just barely touching the ground. Oh, I see what you're saying. All right. So it's right there, barely touching the ground. You ever see JC Snead? JC would just put that thing six, seven, eight inches behind the ball sometimes. Set up this one more time. What? Set up there one more time. I want to get make sure you have the ball in there. Understand? Just that way. Right yeah, this one. Yeah, I don't know if you understand. Yeah. This driver too, like it's long. That is long. Okay. That way, you you can't slide. forced to just keep everything centered. Yeah. It's really easy for you if you go, if you pretend you go up to P9 now, I want to go up to P9. Okay? Now just come off your right foot, release your right ankle, push your right knee close together. Right? 
turn your hips five more degrees. Look out your knees, your hips. Now just come sideways with the shoulders this way. So you just kind of feel like you just, you're just you going to go. Yeah. Yeah, I think that scrum grip will help. I've always, you know, I was about, actually along with a weak grip. The idea I was just strong, flexible, and all that kind of being a good athlete. Because this guy, you know, came back and been a Ford as a club pro, growth seal right through up, and they, hey, you gotta put it right here on top of the shaft. You gotta be right here. <laughs> we saw those pictures, elbows in. Yeah, but your elbows, your elbows, watch, your elbow was four inch or left hip. Yeah. Your elbows were very, very close. Yeah, I know. You, and you, you took it kind of up a little bit high. Yeah. So the shaft really dropped. Yeah, right. I got a lot of. <laughs> yep. That's what I said. I, you, know, I, you know what amazes me is that, that, well, first of all, I think the easiest position for people to play is with a narrow stance like that. Mm -hmm. Arturino's got a real wide stance. Mm -hmm. He's got to do that in order to, I mean, his pictures, he's he showing his left leg is like this. Right? Yeah. Trevino takes it up, his left heel's off the ground. Yeah. This allows him to get real low through the ball this way. Yeah. He gets a wider stance, his hands come up higher. I mean, if you've got a more narrow stance. Mm -hmm. He's got a wider stance, he can get down lower this way. Here, it's like this. My hands right now, you want know, to measure this with a driver? Okay, to, to the top, to my right. Top. Right here, right? Okay, I'll keep right here, right? Now, if I sit up again, now, now I'm over here. Two inches. I'll do the same one. Right now. So you yeah. see, the only time you get wide is if your back hurts. There you go. The only time you're wide is if your back hurts. Yeah, well, I, um, well, I, first time I remember, it's 80, 89, I didn't know what was wrong. I didn't know I had a back problem. Yeah. But what, what allowed me to do is I got wider and wider, and don't get me wrong, I hit the ball still well. Yeah. But it, it would put more strain on my back. Now, now that I've got some of my mechanics halfway under control. They're good. Yeah. What? They're good. Uh, the, the best the best golf I can remember playing in my stand was 14 inches wide when I could Jody sent me with the driver. The driver. He's that wide of the driver. The driver like that. <laughs> you are forced. You're forced to just go around your axis like That's this. That's about five inches. Okay. Yeah. How, how many like this? Yeah. You can't. You just pivot. Yeah. Like this. Is, and everything's so light. Everything just goes. Yeah. Okay. My goal is eventually. Do you want to say put your feet together like this? No. Right. It's about four to six inches. I'm telling you, I played some of my best golf and I hit it long and everything. Everything. <laughs> and like this. Little duck feet. Take it up here like this, bang. Then here the right heel would stay down and in. Here the right knee and everything like this. See, this goes too. See, the release of it gets way out in front. So it's just right, right next to it. Yeah. So the right heel would stay down and like here. Right knee, right hip. I'm like a girl here with this towel. Don't worry, I'm not gay, I'm not gay, I'm not gay. <laughs> you know what amazed me about Jody is that Jody learned all this stuff and, and he completely lost it. You know, all more reason why? Because he always plays with a close, he always plays the kid with a close club track. Yeah. In a real pressure situation, take it in and you just beat it right on down. Wham! Right? Yeah. Right? If you start opening the club face, I don't know. No, I like that. I like that. Even McCord. McCord was recently left through something like this. Yeah. And he's taking the back of the shaft was pointing at his toe stance line at P2 and a half. I mean, at P2 and a half. That must be three. He's going to go vertical, vertical and cross over. And uh, the moment he starts potting his back, see, McCord would do this last week. This is just. Three months ago, right. he would set up like this. He would set up as such. This is then. Take it over here like this and go that way. He's still bent. What? He's still bent. He's still bent. Yeah. But he would take it over right here like this, and then he would go up and he would cross. Yeah. His hands continue where not keep going up. Any kind of play. Right. Now, if you look at the guy, he releases the shaft and it goes to the base of the right heel. Then the hands go to the right shoulder. And the hand trajectory kind of to my right shoulder, okay? They didn't keep going through the base or towards the, 
more the bottom of the right heel marks. Our releases watch is P1 to P2. Now the shaft goes to the base of my right heel mark, so that my hand trajectory path goes to the base of the right. Okay. That happens because look at my left shoulder. I love left shoulder. Yeah. It just keeps rotating. Right. Takes it up there. Yeah. What my core moves, what my core was doing. He was taking the club back, P1 to P2 like this, left wrist stays bent, take it up like this, and his shoulder would stop turning, and then the hand trajectory path started going to the upper part of the right hand. Finally get to the top and then just cross it over. Right? So one of the ways to get him to get the shaft going off at right angles to the upper thoracic spine, if you're like this, when the neck is the butt of the club to trace the plane line, once he raised the club P1 to P2, Start bending the back of the right wrist, and all I did was pivot now, just pivot, 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 traces the line. And now, as the left shoulder keeps moving, the left shaft goes to the base of the right humerus, the hand trajectory path goes to the right humerus, okay? It just keeps going because the left shoulder went up. Now, from there, he just squares, square right back up here like this, come down to P6, right back up here like this, come down. So, McCord had to start dorsiflexing. flexing. Back of the right wrist, so you, maximum degree. You're just you're just releasing the shaft though by the dorsiflexion. That's right. Now you just maintain it. Just now use that to make sure your left shoulder keeps going down and around, right? And now put your 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 hands outside your right shoulder. Like that, and your left arm's got to be parallel to the shoulder. And it comes through here. Yep. That's not releasing there at all. Yeah. Well, now you come here. We'll go to your heel stance, line it up. Yeah. You just want to stay focused this way. Straighten up now. Yeah, it comes up because it'll help you maintain course still number yeah. two, okay. sideways. Because okay. if you come over here like this and release this, yeah. and then if you release your left elbow, yeah. you go that way like this, or go this way here like this. Yeah. If you, but if you cock the club, you go whoosh, and up like this, it helps you maintain the tilt. Going over here and go whoosh, up that way. So what do you, you cock in the left wrist and the ball through this? Yeah, this comes here, this, and this bends, this bends the ball. Right here. And then it comes up like this. And it bends and follows through there. Yes. Okay. It has to bend. You don't, you don't try to keep it flat. Yeah. Here, you have to keep rotating like this. No, 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 no. Oh. Oh, it has to start bending again. Okay. Well, it's midnight. <laughs> what time is it? Midnight. Time to go to bed. Time to go <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I like that setup. I like this. I get the narrower stance and the shoulders. Turn, turn your right knee out, straighten your right knee out, and let your left shoulder keep going down, down and around. Yeah, I was trying that on the driving, my driving there, and I was, it was much better, just trying to get the shoulder to go down. Yeah, well, the key is you gotta, you gotta have your, if your hands go inside, your left shoulder goes down, it's gotta keep coming around this way. Mm -hmm. So it goes down, it's gotta keep on turning your Yeah, because that keeps the hand moving like this, you see. Yeah. But see, listen, this is why it's important to get on the playing surface yeah. and you watch someone do it in the heat, right. Right. in the battle, right. in the competition, right. performing on stage as an artist. Yeah. It's one thing you know, to talk about this stuff conceptually, yeah. but you have to get out and see. It does the individual do exactly what he's professing to do. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, see, I'm hitting all these lancing blows that he's doing here. That's all I do now. That's why I've lost it. Well, listen, it's, it's a tragedy when you have played well when you were younger, and, and you know you, you go into business world and stuff like that, and you still want to play the game, and you never know. I mean, you're, it's a year from now, you might be doing a, uh, who was that guy, Tom Marlowe, or what's that guy? Tom Marlowe. What? Tom Marlowe. Yeah, Marlowe, yeah. Marlowe. You're going out that senior tour as an amateur, getting a couple of tournaments and winning, right? The resurrection of Steve Erickson. Back of the right wrist, and you can just come. Now you can bend the back of the right wrist the most if, you're, if your left hand's turned over. Turn over this way? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Make it strong. Yeah. Like this, you can just cock it, and the back of the right wrist fully bends. Yeah. You can just take that baby up to the top, and you can come right back on down, right? And then jam that cover right in the ground, then recock it, and come on up. No problem. Now, go ahead and uh, have your left hand in a real weak position. 
That was better than the very first. Okay. <laughs> then go ahead and try to just hit yeah, a couple of those little word warm burners, all right? That's unbelievable. What do you think? Why, why do you think Tom Watson was one of the erratic players that ever played against him? He took the head, he took the club down the line, closed it. I think I had a day. What? Medicus had a day. Say it again. The guy from Medicus. Why do you want to take it back that way? And he said, "You don't do it." He said, "I watched your video this morning. You don't do that." <laughs> really? Well, watch when the hands go in left to impact. Yeah. You see. Yeah. We have forty-five minutes. Sound that up? Huh? Everything comes back to what you call interpretation. Is it first, second, third, fourth, fifth generation interpretation or somebody else's interpretation? Right. And then the name Ellie Schmore. Right. The question how you get the, the original interpretation of the original thinkers. Right. Whether it's Freud or some of these other fellows, right? Right. The original thinkers who came up with the original concepts and stuff. Now, by no means am I saying that. That uh, we're the first ones to come up and say, yeah, you want to have your grip strong and close the club. No, no. Yeah. But we're, we're trying to ex explain the anatomical science. So what's the advantage for doing that? Yeah. And the problem with that a lot of people have is they're, they're not getting the proper interpretation, just like you right. were mentioning about the fellows in Medicus Club. Right. Why do you want to close the club face? Yeah. Well, we just explained for 20 or 30 <laughs> minutes to okay? it. The right wrist bent. Yeah. But there, there, are some, you know, there are some distinct advantages, you know. For well, versatility, the ability to kick the ball down and, and to uh, you can be coming through impact and feel like you're still hitting a knockdown shot, just reverse your tilt back like this, and your back to right wrist is still fully bent. You get a wonderfully crisp, whoosh, like this, descending blow to the, take the ball and get a trajectory because you're backing it up this way. Yeah. And the back of the right wrist is like this, yeah. right? And this, this so you can just hang on to it like this. But then you pivot, takes your hand out and squares the blade up like this. Yeah. Pivot like that, okay? And also the straightening of the right elbow going this way, okay? But now, if the right wrist is more, when you come down at the bottom down here like this, your shoulders are too, maybe too closed, everything's going inside out like this, then the wrist sometimes is flattened out like this to redirect the club head to down to the original line of compression, you see? To mind and that's usually when the right shoulder stops moving, mm -hmm. And, and the shafts, the person may be more upright, mm -hmm. and they're coming back like this, and they're going to go like that, move independently. Mm -hmm. and, and they don't have the shaft P2 tracing the plan line, the butt of the club, and they come wham, right around like that, you see? Yeah. And when you were younger, that's probably what you did. Right. What? Yeah. What do you do from the standpoint of uh, the yips? Iris has got the yips on everything. He has? Yeah. And what I mean by that? Every club, every, every, every chip, club. every club. Every, every club. What? Every club. But what I mean by the hips of the full clubs? Yeah. They get up like this. And the ball is here. I, mean, I can't really do it, but you know, it's a, I mean, it's, it just, you know, it can never, you can't get it. Well, then does he actually get, get the ball or just? No, no, just on the back. You can't yeah. get it. Yeah, you can't get it going. You just can't get it going. Yeah, it's real simple. There's, a, there's a two or three things you can, you can do. He has, to, he has to come up with a new wagline system. Uh -huh. one, of the, one of the ways is to go like this. Just to have him wiggle inside the ball here. Yeah. Have him wiggle inside the ball like this, right? Uh -huh. Then when he's ready to go, yeah. everything stays in motion. Yeah. Then when he's ready to go, he, he kind of like slows down the wiggle, like right before it makes little circles. Yeah. Okay? Uh -huh. And if he wants to wiggle the club this way, yeah. or if he wants to go like this, Waggle it, or even go up through it above the ball, right? Mm -hmm. And then put it back in like this. Yeah. And then when he's ready to go, he's gonna go like this. The moment, the moment, he puts the club behind the ball, then he goes. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's got to kick the club inside the ball. Yeah. He gets it over here like this, yeah. right? Yeah. He's got to do all his waggling inside the ball and over here like this. Keep his eyes on the ball. Then when he's ready to go, put it back here. Then. What about putty? Same thing. But you see what I was doing? I would always go like this, watch. 
here, here's the ball like this. Here, this is my man. Is that I would, I would. Yeah, right there. Right there. there. No, move back a little I bit further. What? Back a little further. Okay, that's fine. I should focus in just a hair closer. Right. Okay. Is it? Yeah, I got you from waist down. All right now? Yep. So, is it Iverson? Iverson, Jim. right. Jim Iverson, right. Okay. So, if, he, if he's going to waggle the club, he's going to waggle the club inside the ball like yay, and just keep his eyes on the ball, but just keep the club waggling inside. And when he's ready to go, Right down to it, yeah. And the moment it does it, he's in here like this. The moment it brings it in here like this, he goes. Yeah. The moment it touches the ground behind the ball, phew, it goes. That way, like, this, there's been like Caesar had a problem. Caesar, remember, not now, but years ago. Yeah. He shot 38 in 1972 LA Open. Uh -huh. Front and backside, he quit. Yeah. Because he couldn't get the club going back. <laughs> yeah. Some guys have that problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going uh, Oops, I gotta do it here.